the statue at the end. Who is it? Is it Kang? Well, <laughs> I have my own interpretation of who it is, but I think it's kind of fun that people are debating it, right? Doesn't that make it more exciting? I want your show? interpretation. I want yours. Thank you so much, Kate. How are you? I am Emmanuel Noisette, uh, or E-Man from E-Man's Movie Reviews uh, out here in Chicago. Uh, first, I'd like to congratulate you on making such a wonderful story. And as a fellow Loki fan, just bringing this character to life the way that you did was just so masterful. So I, I just want to say thank you, first of all. But I also have to borrow a page from your pitch to Marvel Studios and begin with a big I'm sorry. OK, because I'm a bit of a Marvel detective and a Marvel <laughs> theorist. So I'm hoping you can clear up a couple questions just, you know, with your interpretations or thoughts. So if you don't okay. mind, let's let's get to it and, and get this going. So in the very first episode, we discovered that the Infinity Stones don't work in the TVA. But um, the when the TVA hunters go outside of the TVA, they're not affected by the stones. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so it's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> like, I have been thinking about this, but like, I guess the TVA, right, have complete control over everything. So I guess my thinking is always, if anything that wasn't supposed to happen, you know, which would technically create a branch, because the TVA shouldn't be affected by them, and in doing that would create a branch, I guess, like, I think that's my thought that they would be able to control it within their means, if that makes sense. But yeah. Okay. All right. That's cool. I I'll roll with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, since Loki is a frost giant, and if magic doesn't work in the TVA, why doesn't he turn blue? Ah, oh, very interesting. Very interesting. That's a good I don't have an answer to your question. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay, too. I'm just here to ask. We'll roll, we'll let the Marvel theorists okay. take care of that. I filled it to the writers. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so this was a question on the uh, on the minds of many Marvel fans. Um, sure. Were those actually magical runes in the Timekeeper's chamber? No, I think that would be coincidental. It was just part of our design in the Timekeeper's chamber, basically. Sure. Uh, so when it comes to characters, sometimes it's the mystery of the character that that draws in the intrigue. And this show did such a wonderful job of doing a deep dive into Loki's character where it was kind of like a therapy session full of breakthroughs. So do you ever wonder or I'm sorry, do you ever worry that we may get to know Loki a little too well and that mystery fades? Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, so I, I think for me, like, I feel like in the comics, you know, Loki is such a rich character. And, you know, even with six hours, I feel like we've just scratched the surface of who Loki is. And I think there's so many more avenues to travel down. So I think for me, I guess I don't feel that in that sense. And also, I'm just so excited to see where his journey goes, because, you know, this is a character who in episode one was like, I want the throne. And he was focused on that when he was talking to Mobius. And as you mentioned, like he has his therapy with Mobius. I mean, Good Will Hunting was like one of our references. And I think that's what I love about it, though, is that by episode six, he doesn't want the throne anymore. He's saying to Sylvia, I just want you to be OK. And that's such a selfless thing to want. You know, it's not a selfish want anymore. And that already shows his growth so much as a character. and. I think there's so much more to explore with him though, for sure, because this is a whole new Loki. He's in a completely different space. And also we don't know where he is at the end of the show. And yeah, so I think, no, I, I think for me, it was exciting to see this kind of vulnerable side of Loki and just kind of digging into, yeah, like as Mobius says, what makes Loki tick? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, now, I know you have an affinity for villains um, and we've all fallen in love with Loki's character as a villain. However, this series has turned him into an anti-hero. Would it, what do you think it would take to have Loki go back to being a villain? Or do you think his path is set in being just an anti-hero? Oh, so I suppose that's tricky for me to answer in the sense that I don't know future plans with him, but I think that's the exciting thing. I can speak to his character though and say that that's the exciting thing about Loki, right? Is that you never know which way he's gonna go. Is he good? Is he bad? And like it's kind of like almost echoes out to he who remains you know he seemed like the the most pure and good of all his variants but he's like i've done terrible things but they're for a good reason and i think that 
yeah I think that for us was always something we wanted to look at in the show was like because you know at the end of the day like Loki you could say anti-hero but he is at the end of the day when they're fighting with Sylvie he is saying I think we should listen to his you know what he's selling us and that would mean the TVA would continue and timelines would be pruned and innocent people will be taken from their timeline in the sense of any tiny nexus event so it's not a completely like a pure want if you see what I mean so Mm. yeah so I think that he'll always for me anyway exist in that gray area which is what makes him so exciting oh for sure for sure um so how does it feel knowing that you just made Sylvie the biggest scapegoat in the MCU for the next 10 years of MCU drama. I think it feels great because I mean I I was I, I love that from the beginning she's like I'm gonna do this mission and we see her do that that's exactly what she does and it costs her the person that she cares about but she's like I've just got to do it and I think for me it, it's exciting to be part of that, you know, new part for Marvel, like with the multiverse and that she launched that. I mean, I, I felt very lucky that I got to be sort of part of that chaos being unleashed. And I, I mean, by a Loki, no less, it had to be a Loki. So, of course, yeah. In episode <laughs> six, there was a strange spacecraft that we saw flying about. Was that the void spaceship that Miss Minutes was talking about? No. So I would say it's been in a previous Marvel movie um and it's definitely been seen i think it has been seen so yeah if people dig through past mcu they'll they'll find it i'm, okay. I'm hoping out people to find it i don't want to give it away but yeah okay okay that's cool that's good enough now loki's are supposed to die alone is it safe to, or correct to assume that on lamentous one that nexus event was them about to die together or was it because of their love for each other suppose it's like a red pill and blue pill thing right like people can choose which one they want to take but for me um I've always assumed that it's their connection and I don't know if they quite know it's love or yet but I think it's just that strong chemistry between them both and that empathy towards each other and that I love that the idea that these kind of burgeoning feelings for each other is enough to kind of bring down this organization so yeah so that would be my take on it but okay. open to interpretation okay last question <laughs> Um, Just to clear things up, because people like to run with their own assumptions, the statue at the end, who is it? Is it Kang? Well, (laughs) I have my own interpretation of who it is, but I think it's kind of fun that people are debating it, right? Doesn't that make it more exciting? I want your interpretation. I want yours. (laughs) I think for me, I would say like, you know, it's the variant of he who remains. There you go. (laughs) <laughs> I was like, damn you. But, Marvel um, has trained you well. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kate. I appreciate you and all your time and what you did here was great. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Cheers. Thanks for chatting with me. Are you new to my channel? Be sure to check out some of my other videos. And if you like what you see, feel free to subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, and tell a friend. I've got more videos and reviews to do for you all. And until next time, I'll see you all later.